Good evening to you. For Tennis Through, I'm Regan Devines in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with this evening's headlines. And then there were two. Manuel Baldizon is out of Guatemala's presidential race, and we'll tell you why. And, and tens of thousands stranded in Chile as airport workers say no more. These stories and more now on From the South. Guatemala's election authorities have finally announced who will be going through to the second round of the presidential elections on October 25th. The former First Lady Sandra Torres will face the former comedian Jimmy Morales, who had a clear lead in the first round just 10 days ago. On Monday, the other contender for second place, Manuel Baldizon, of the right-wing Leider Party, withdrew from the race alleging irregularities. The election comes in the middle of a corruption scandal that has shaken Guatemala's political system and forced the resignation of former President Otto Perez Molina. The Venezuelan Foreign Minister, Delcy Rodriguez, has confirmed an UNASUR meeting for Monday, the 21st of September, where it's expected that President Nicolas Maduro will have an opportunity to speak with Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos over the border issues. The pro-temporary president of UNASUR called for a meeting of the heads of state of UNASUR from Monday the 21st. It was called by Argentina and we are in favor of this meeting of UNASUR. This was a proposal that President Maduro had made to President Juan Manuel Santos, that in whatever moment we are available to meet and at whatever place in the region. The Venezuelan Foreign Minister also announced a high-level meeting with Saudi Arabia to discuss oil prices and other bilateral issues. Venezuela is proposing a joint meeting of OPEC and non-OPEC members to an, in an effort to stabilize prices. Saudi Arabia is the largest oil producer in OPEC and has so far resisted any reduction in output. Mexico's Foreign Minister Claudia Ruiz Massieu is in Cairo seeking answers from Egyptian authorities after security forces in that country mistakenly killed eight Mexican tourists. Ruiz Massieu traveled there with seven relatives of some of the victims along with Mexican doctors and forensic police. At least two Mexicans have been confirmed dead and six others wounded after the airstrike. There are six others who the government had been unclear of. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto has demanded an exhaustive investigation from Egyptian authorities, which vowed to form an investigative committee headed by the Prime Minister. In Argentina, judicial authorities have accused a Spanish company of joining a vulture fund to commit fraud against the state, which would mean billions of dollars in losses. Our correspondent, Loreano Ponce, filed this report. In a press conference held on Monday, two public prosecutors say they have filed a complaint against the Spanish corporate holding Marsans and the Burford Capital Hedge Fund for alleged fraud against the state. They explained that while Burford is one of the vulture funds litigating against the country, it is also Marsan's main sponsor in the lawsuit they filed against Argentina after the renationalization of the Aerolíneas Argentinas airline in 2008, while Marsan's was its private operator. We have noticed and we have proved that confirms what we say, that behind this lies a fraudulent maneuver that seeks to deceive the court into ruling against Argentina's interests. The accusation took place after a contract signed between Marsans and Burford Capital, which established that the Spanish holding transferred its litigation rights to the Vulture Fund, was found. This means if both economic groups manage to beat Argentina in court, the country will have to pay more than $1.6 billion to Burford Capital. The Marsans Group reached an agreement with this Vulture Fund for which the fund carries on this legal process against Argentina, and in exchange for that, they would receive the total amount they demand in the court rules against Argentina. And once they took their part and collect their fees, they would give the Spanish companies what is left. According to the prosecutors, Marsans has provided false documentation to the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes in order to gain a favorable ruling. However, the court does not seem concerned about that.
The International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes seems very calm about this because we have already denounced these things to a judge and there was no answer about it. Besides Marsan's support for capital, the accusation also involved several local law firms which are known for advising corporate holdings in their legal disputes against the Argentine state. Laureana Ponce, Telesur, Buenos Aires. Hundreds of Brazilian auto workers and other trade unionists have blocked the main avenue in Sao Paulo a day after the government announced big cuts in public spending. The adjustment aims to save nearly $17 billion and turn a primary deficit into a surplus. The auto workers who are part of the CUTE Federation and aligned with the government want to ensure they, still, they can still receive an increase in line with inflation. But they are also mobilizing to defend the government from attacks by the right. Flights have been suspended across Chile as airport employees held a 24-hour strike over working conditions and pensions. About 17,000 passengers were unable to travel as Latin America's largest airline, LATAM, as well as local airlines, cancelled all their flights. The Minister of Labour said the stoppage was illegal because the airport staff consists of public employees. On this day, nothing will take off in this country. This is linked to recuperating what is our right to decent social security. We are completely powerless nowadays, and so we want respect for our 14 months of work, which ended on July 2nd this year. We need to understand the world we live in. We require news with critical points of view, thorough analysis and social commitment. This information is vital to think, to understand and to change. The world demands a new perspective. Telesurtv.net forward slash English. Wherever the news, you'll be there. Rod Stars, G1, and Claudia De La Cruz are Rebel Diaz, hip-hop activists positioned within a history of political resistance through music, and you don't stop. They invite young people to express themselves about their social struggles, and you don't stop. Watch it on telesurtv.net slash English. Telesur, wherever the news, you'll be there. Ahead of this weekend's snap elections in Greece, a live televised debate put former Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras head-to-head -head against conservative candidate Evangelos Mermarakis. The two debated on popular issues such as Greece's $97 billion debt as well as the refugee crisis. Tsipras is asking the Greek population for a second chance to see Greece through its crisis. Mermarakis, on the other hand, does not want the former prime minister back in power. The dilemma next Sunday is simple. Do we want the Greece of the few or of the many? Do we want a Greece that will not give vision or prospect? Or a Greece that will give possibility to all Greeks so that the Greeks can prosper, live creatively, and have an optimist future? It is in your hands. Some wanted to make our effort a brief interlude. Let us not permit that. Let us win the future by ending with the past. I would never want to see you become Prime Minister again. You are the Prime Minister that is leaving, that brought catastrophe to the country, that brought the biggest maleficence. We never had so many ills in such a small period of time. Palestinians were attacked by Israeli security forces for a third consecutive day at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. At least, at least 16 Palestinians were injured by rubber bullets and other methods of aggression by the Israeli forces. Palestinians are concerned that the Israeli government is going to ban Muslims from entering the holy site. 
The United Nations, United States and Jordan, which holds legal custody over the mosque, have warned Israel to stop the, the provocations. And finally this afternoon, it was a beautiful sight to witness by park officials. A new addition to Berlin's Thayer Park, Thayer park Zoo, a baby rhino. Visitors were finally given the opportunity to view the, the baby Indian rhino, which was born on September 9th to his 20-year-old mother. The Indian rhino had been the Indian rhino had been rendered virtually extinct in the mid-90s due to indiscriminate hunting. However, it's clear that the future still holds great possibilities for the species. A name is yet to be given to the newborn. And there is more on these and other stories on our website, telesurutv.net slash English, from our news teams in Quito, Ecuador, and here in Caracas, Venezuela. For Telesur English, I'm Regan Beans. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.